Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this really cute bumblebee shadow box using the Hello Ladybug bundle. I've got a little magnetic closure on there and inside is a little sentiment, my friend, and this adorable lint chocolate. I found this at my local Target, but look how cute this is, the lint bugs and bees, ladybugs and bumblebees. And what a sweet little pick me up for somebody. In this project, we're using the Hello Ladybug Bundle. I love this bundle, super versatile. Not only can you make ladybugs, but you can make bumblebees. I've seen bunnies, butterflies, super cute. And here is the Ladybug Builder Punch. This is a great bundle at $32.25 in the US to add to your stash, and I absolutely love it. So let me show you how easy this shadow box is to make. We're gonna start with a piece of bumblebee cardstock that measures seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters, so a square piece of cardstock. And we're gonna score it on all four sides at five eighths, one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, and two and a half. And I'm gonna repeat that on all four sides. Now because this is square, the next two score lines, it doesn't matter which side you do them on, we're just gonna do it on opposite sides. But we're gonna score at three and one eighths down to the second horizontal score line, and four and five eighths, again stopping at that second horizontal score line. Then you're gonna to wanna to rotate it 180 degrees and repeat those two score lines. And that's how our cardstock's gonna look. Next we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the cardstock. And then bringing in our template here, we're making this a pretty simple shadow box compared to the shadow boxes I've shared in the past because I wanted to make this quick and easy to put together so you could make quite a few of these. What we're gonna start doing is cutting out the 16 squares in the corner. So it doesn't matter where you start, but you wanna come in four score lines and cut up four score lines. Then I'm just gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and again come in four score lines and up four score lines to remove the 16 squares in the corner. And then we're gonna repeat that on all four corners, always coming in four score lines and cutting up four score lines. All right, so now that we've done that, we're gonna come in and cut up those short score lines that we've made. And now we're gonna make some angle cuts so that we can make this look like a really pretty frame shadow box. I like to fold the sides out of the way, and I'm gonna cut on the diagonal from this score line diagonally up to the left to the bottom of that cut mark that we just made, like so. And we're gonna repeat the same thing. Now I'm right-handed, it's always easier for me to cut from the right up to the left, but repeating the same motion from this score line on the angle to the bottom of that cut. So we have that frame shape there. So I'm gonna rotate it and repeat the same thing for the remaining two. And then when you're done, it should look like this. All right, now we're gonna start to put our shadow box together, but before we do, we're gonna add a magnet here. Now the magnetic closure is completely optional. You could use a Velcro closure as well, or even wrap a belly band or ribbon, however you'd like to close it. I'm gonna show you how to do a magnetic closure here and hide your magnets. I'm gonna grab one of the magnets and add it to a glue dot. Then using my take your pick tool, I'll lift that up off the glue dot roll. And we're gonna place the magnet here on the third section in from the right. Now I've got my cardstock looking like this. This is the inside of the box. And I'm just gonna come in and center it right to left in the score lines and top to bottom from the edges. And we're gonna place that magnet there. What that essentially does is make sure that the magnet is actually hidden right here underneath our shadow box. So we wanna do that first before we glue everything together. Now I'm gonna use liquid glue for this part. You can absolutely use tear and tape or your adhesive of choice. We're gonna start on the sides that don't have the diagonal cut lines. And I'm gonna place liquid glue along this outside section, so between the edge and the score line. And I'm gonna fold on the first score line and the third score line. And that's gonna allow us to fold this piece flat and put it into place here. Now again, we've got liquid glue, so it's gonna take us a few seconds to get that glue to stick, and that's starting to form one of the sides of our shadow box. So I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Again, always folding on the first score line and the third score line to get that to fold flat. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with these diagonal pieces. Again, liquid glue here on this outside section. 
fold on the first and the third score line and that should nestle right between your two sides. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Fold on the first and third score lines and stick that into place. All right, now here's how this shadow box is gonna go together. You're gonna pull up the top and the bottom and then these are gonna slide up underneath those diagonal cut lines. And that's how we're gonna form the shadow box. Really easy to put together. But I do wanna put a little bit of liquid glue to hold that into place. So I'm gonna place tiny dots of liquid glue. I'll show you closer to the camera. We're gonna put it in those four corners. Those are gonna be the corners that are gonna tuck up underneath these diagonal pieces. So again, pull up the top and the bottom and then push in the side and that's gonna help prevent that glue from oozing everywhere. Just kind of do one side at a time. And now what I'm gonna do is making sure I'm sort of squaring up the sides and I'm gonna press right here and right here. Those are where those little glue dots that we created are. Now you can use mini glue dots here as well. And I'm just gonna make sure on all four corners that we've got that all squared up. All right, so there's our adorable shadow box. Now you're probably wondering, where is the magnet? So here's the trick. I'm gonna grab the other magnet and we're gonna drop it. Now it didn't stick to this side, so it's likely on this side. And sure enough, there is where our magnet is. So I'm gonna let that sit there just so we know how we're gonna glue the next piece, which is gonna be the cover of our shadow box. I've got another piece of bumblebee cardstock that measures two and three quarters by three and three eighths. And along the three and three eighths inch side, or the long side, we're gonna go ahead and score this at five eighths of an inch. Then I'm just gonna fold and burnish on the score line. And this cover, we're gonna go ahead and adhere like so. We're just gonna glue this edge on this left side. Again, I'm keeping the magnet in place so that I know that we want this to be the side that we attach the cover to. So I'm just gonna take liquid glue and put it here right along that side. And what I like to do, I didn't wanna give you any crazy measurements for this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set the cover on first and then make sure that that side wraps around. It's not gonna be a perfect fit because we are fitting this over a shadow box, but it's gonna be really close enough and it's gonna look just great. It makes it really easy to put this together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that side. There we go, okay. All right, now we're gonna come and do a little bit of stamping here. We've got a basic black piece that measures two and five eighths by two and five eighths. We've got the Simply Marvelous Designer Series paper, which is a free celebration item with a purchase of $50. And this piece measures two and a half by two and a half. We've got another basic black piece that measures one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And then a tiny piece of basic white that measures one and a quarter by one and a quarter. These two pieces are gonna fit inside of our shadow box. So I'm gonna come in with the You Can Bug Me Anytime sentiment. And then the My Friend sentiment for the basic white piece. Then I'm just gonna layer these pieces together with liquid glue. All right, now this tiny piece we're gonna adhere inside our shadow box. Liquid glue is your friend here because it's a little bit difficult to get it in the shadow box. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of drop it in there and then I can slide it around and center it into place like so. Now for this lid piece, I actually want to attach the magnet to the front cover because that's really gonna hide that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the cover and then drop the magnet again so that it knows where it's supposed to go. I'm gonna gently pick up the magnet. I wanna keep it in the same orientation because it's lining up the right north and south of the magnet. I'm gonna pick this up and then place a glue dot on the back side of it, like so. Now you're probably gonna to wanna to pick this up with your fingers. Make sure you're not sticking to the glue dots because we do wanna be able to just drop it over this cover in the right spot, like that, okay? Now that's stuck down with a glue dot. Love how that cover works. Now for this next piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put some dimensionals on. I know there's quite a few dimensionals there, but I like making sure that that stays popped up. And the other thing I'm gonna do is actually pick up another glue dot and layer that over the top of my magnet because I also want that to stick to this piece as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. We've got our magnet in place and our cover closed, and then I can go ahead and center this on our cover and press that down into place. So I'm pressing it into the magnet. And so now the magnet is hiding. I'm not sure if you can see that under there, but it's right there. 
but now we can open and close and our magnets are hidden. Now let's get to work on the adorable bumblebee. I'm using a piece of the All Together Designer Series paper, which is this great black and white striped paper. And I'm just gonna grab one of the Dark Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna use the brush tip here. And all I'm gonna do, I've got a scrap piece of grid paper here. I'm just gonna come in and color with the Dark Daffodil Delight about four stripes. You can be kind of messy here. It'll look like it's making the black stripes darker, but that's just while the alcohol ink is wet. Once it dries, you're not gonna see that. So you don't have to worry about staying in the lines here. Now I'm gonna bring in the Ladybug Builder Punch. And you wanna be strategic about how you punch this. Because we've got the Ladybug on the right and the wings on the left, I'm gonna punch from left to right. And that's just gonna maximize the punches I have for this adorable ladybug. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and punch, and we can do four of them with this piece of paper. Just work your way down, making sure you're picking up the area that you colored with the Daffodil Delight stamp and blend. All right, now let's get the bumblebees out of here. Now, you're not gonna be able to make just one of these, so just go ahead and punch a few while you're at it. I'm also gonna come in and punch from basic black, another bumblebee body or ladybug body. Then I'm gonna take a piece of vellum and we're gonna punch out the wings. All right, so to assemble our bumblebee, we're gonna go ahead and cut the bumblebee's head off. So we've got the body there. I'm gonna glue that to the basic black piece. And then I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot and the wings, and I'm gonna stick a glue dot right in the middle of those wings, like so. We're gonna layer that on our bumblebee here. Now to hide that glue dot, I'm gonna grab a matte black dot. You could do a rhinestone as well and we're gonna pop that right there. How cute is the bumblebee? Oh, I love this. I wanna give a shout out to Julie Gilson at Stampin' Gala for the bumblebee idea. And then I'm gonna bring in the medium daisy punch and we're gonna punch out a pair of daisies. And I'm just gonna layer these over each other. And then we're gonna come in and finish decorating our shadow box here. I'm gonna liquid glue the daisy to the front cover. Then I got a trio of dimensionals. And we're gonna pop that on the front of our shadow box here. Then we're gonna pop in our bumblebee treat. And there is our Hello Ladybug Bumblebee Shadow Box. Now with this pack of the Lint Bugs and Bees, obviously you could change this up to be a ladybug or a bumblebee shadow box to make the best use out of that package of chocolates. And I absolutely love, this is just a sweet little random act of kindness, love gift for somebody. Super cute and of course it's so satisfying with the magnetic closure. Again, you can also do a Velcro closure or wrap a ribbon around it. You've got lots of options here. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com for more inspiration. And if you give this project a try, feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.